So real quick. It's going to be really, really quick, I promise. Oh, my hands are ashy. Ashiness perverted. This is that good stuff too. Oh, can you smell it? Smell. <laughs> smell it. Smells good, doesn't it? It's for you. See the homie? You see the homie? Dangerous, isn't he? Listen, listen up and listen well. We about to be like Nike and what? Just do it. Let's get into it. So really, really quick. So what I'm gonna do in this video, literally exactly what the title says, I'm about to give you guys a short review of the last four shows that I have recently watched that is in the anime genre. Okay, so the first show is a show that really is near and dear to my heart because I literally shazammed all of the intro and outro songs of this show. It is none other than My Hero Academia. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Listen to me and listen to me well. I have not read the manga. Might be pronouncing that wrong. Is it manga or manga? You decide. I have to, you know, go to other friends to get some type of insight on what it reads versus what is shown on the actual animated series. And to myself, that's pretty cool. They're actually sticking to the script. I like that. My Hero season six. It starts off pretty crazy, but the thing that I love most about that episode is the growth of my husband, Katsuki Bakugo. I what? I don't care what you say. That's my man and I'm sticking beside him. That man literally was one of the top character developments, in my opinion, of that episode. We're gonna have to give it to Shigaraki. I'm sorry, but Tomura Shigaraki can also get the business. What? Listen to me, <laughs> listen to me well. Tomura Shigaraki, can definitely get, can de Tomura Shigaraki can definitely get the business as well. You feel me? What? One thing is for certain, two things is for sure. That man had the resolve and he went through with it every step of the way. I think it's really funny more than anything that this man woke up out of his sleep. I mean, technically it was sleep to him, but he was in that chamber. If you watch it, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, because you didn't watch it. You go back and watch season six of My Hero Academia, you will realize that oh, Tomura Shigaraki woke up and chose violence. And I love that for him. I mean, when you really think about his storyline, that man was handed the worst deck of cards that you could have possibly imagined. And if you really, really think about it, you know them deck of cards that's chilling somewhere in your house? Literally, like, this ain't even really bad, but, you see what I'm saying? This is what Tomura Shigaraki was handed and was like, <laughs> creator handed him these deck of cards and was like, Tomura Shigaraki literally had the resolve to become the symbol of fear. And he meant that. And I like it, love it, and one more of it. Sorry. One of my favorite anime characters, okay, one of my most favorite is Seshomaru from the show Inuyasha. Why? Because Seshomaru was a man of few words, but that man had the resolve. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> For me as a woman, I like a man that got resolve. I like a man who's like, I don't play. I'm about to show you exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> he ain't gotta do too much, nor does he have to say anything. <laughs> Literally every time Seshomaru came in the scene, everybody was quiet, <laughs> was watchful, because they knew that that man was about that life. <laughs> So, gonna love Tomura. I mean, why not? Shigaraki literally was handed the worst deck of cards. They practically threw it at him. And this man went through all the things that he went through from childhood to now and decided that he's gonna become the symbol of fear. His little sister went into the dad's office and found the picture of his dad and his grandmother. Had no idea the whole time. Like, I wanna be like my grandmother. Then his daddy's like basically beating him to a pulp. Like, no. You do not get to become a hero because heroes abandon the ones that they love for those that they do not know or however Shigaraki says it in season six. Really think about that, that's kind of sad. And more than anything, how would you feel if your grandson wanted to become a hero and all this time, the only reason why he became the symbol of fear, because he's working towards that pretty well, is because you decided to abandon your son. That is a conundrum. So honestly, I support Shigaraki in becoming the symbol of fear. Rewind. The situation that led up to him being abandoned as a child is that he got his quirk. Family, they were thinking he's not gonna have a quirk. He's a quirkless little boy. He's a, he's a square. It's all of nothing is, is what they were basically treating him like. Last time that he got thrown outside for being excited to see that his grandmother was 
also known as a hero. He's sitting outside scratching the crap out of his eyes because he has really bad allergies and he's petting his dog. And then literally two seconds later, that dog turns to stone and he what? He disappears, he dies, he goes bye-bye forever. And then the whole time Tinko is like losing his little mind because his brain is like, wait a second, my dog was here, now he's not, what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Can you imagine that as a child? You're just chilling in this world where quirks are normal and it's a thing and you're in trouble because you wanna to aspire to be something that is recognized as a very successful life. And then next thing you know, you're crying outside because your father is punishing you for wanting to live a life like that. Then within the same amount of time, you're scratching your eye and next thing you know, boom, the dog is gone, the dog dead. You know how sad that is? Anyway, dog died. And then the sister comes out and she realizes that that blood, uh, the puddle of blood sitting next to Tinko is the dog. She screams her little heart out and then her brother is like, no, wait, help me. I don't know what's going on. Up, uh, Now she done decayed and she died as well. The mother comes out and the grandparents and then the mother sees what's going on with her child, which is really freaking sad because my, the mother in me, my motherly instincts immediately was like, I would have done the same thing. If my daughter was sitting outside scratching her little eyeballs out and the next thing you know, I see that our other child is gone and then my only child that's been treated differently for so long is literally crying his heart out but the ground underneath him is shaking I would have been I wouldn't have been able to pick up within that second that my son has the power of decay and he's out here deleting people left and right I just I don't know how I would have reacted but I feel like I would have done the same thing that Tenko's mom did and reached out for him, knowing that she's probably getting ready to die. I mean, it's kind of messed up in a way. Then next thing you know, the grandparents, psh, they disappear too. And then next thing you know, the father takes a stick and literally smacks the crap out of this kid. And what does Tenko decide to do in that moment? He decides to take out his daddy. He said, you was done. You was not important. You was not kind and beat that man with his power. Decay, pow go back to season six my mind just went straight to his storyline because when you watch season six you will see that Shigaraki woke up and chose violence rightfully so that was his childhood and that man was literally as a kid walking around looking for someone to save him and then people were looking at him like oop nope nope we don't want that we don't want them problems looking at him like he was like a piece of scum of the earth so when he got picked up by the one person that he shouldn't got picked up by not everybody's like oh we gotta destroy Shigaraki he's a terrible menace to society well I mean society was a menace to him <laughs> be anything let's be freaking for real i stand with shigaraki do you hear me i don't care what anybody got to say about that you feel me i think what makes shigaraki pretty cool honestly is the fact that he knows that he's a menace to society my man's woke up and one of the first things he says when he wakes up out of the chamber if you watch the show you know what i'm talking about if you don't know what i'm talking about it's because you didn't watch the show my man's woke up and said it's cold Summer. Like who wrote that? Ever made sure that that was in post-production. I need you to DM me and say I came up with that so that I can literally give you all yeah! respects, hands down. Because that's so funny to me. I don't know why that tickled my spirit, but it did. I think it's the writer in me. It might just be the writer in me or the editor in me or the creative in me. I don't know, but it stuck out like a sore thumb. Like what? Of all the things to say when you first wake up, you ain't even wake up and be like, who are you? What are you doing here? Shigaraki didn't ask no questions. And I love that for him. More than anything, I'm kind of talking about the last couple of episodes of season six. I'm gonna be honest with you. Everything else was pretty cool as far as the kids getting together to try to take down Jaya Macchiato, whatever his, Giant Macchiato, whatever his name is, I forgot. Because my brain is still wrapped around what happened towards the very end of season six. Deku entering his vigilante arc and all the other stuff, which that's a whole nother conversation. I just discovered arcs. So my brain is a little foggy right now trying to recap season six. But all I'm going to say is season six definitely had me up and down. Season six uh, opening intros, got those songs on my phone. Play them daily. My daughter now loves one of those songs because... I don't know why I think it's just the musician, the the creative in her. She likes one of the songs. My favorite song is the one by Eve. And I might be pronouncing it wrong, but it's Boca Reno. But he says it differently in the song, obviously, when he's singing it. He's like, Boca Reno. Na, 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 na. Intro makes my eyes immediately water up. I will say that the comment section had me tearing up too because everybody was like, this is so relatable. I think like Deku is finally at that 
he's in that vigilante arc where we're able to actually relate to him. And in a way, I kind of agree because as a grown woman watching a show about teenagers, how can I relate to you unless I know that you really know how to go through some stuff? And outside of everything else, like Kachan got kidnapped. Beginning when Deku, you know, was getting ready to get swallowed whole by that green monster or whatever. Like we're watching him elevate from that kid to slowly becoming the world's greatest hero. So I ain't gonna lie, them intros touched my heart. They had me crying. Like I was for real crying, real alligator tears. My eyes was puffy the whole weekend because I watched, I messed up and I watched season six, I binge watched season six on the weekend. How does your intro go so well with the show? And then I even took the time to actually check out even other songs that he has. And I watched the actual music video for the song Boca Reno by Eve. And that was just the same. I mean, that whole music video could have been a whole anime show within itself. That's how good the song is. But if you haven't watched season six, please know that it's an emotional roller coaster. Brace yourself, get the tissue box get a teddy bear, get you a blankie ready just in case. Find something that's gonna be comforting after you finish it because you're gonna be very emotionally distraught. If you're not emotionally distraught, then you are a thug and a part of an elite group of people that can watch shows like this and not cry and, or shed any tears. And for that, I commend you. On to the next. The next show that I will highly recommend and just watch, Fruit Basket. I have watched it before, but I could not, for the life of me, I could not remember what the show was about. My eyes got watery because it's about a girl. Her name is Toru and her mom basically died. Her dad died of a cold and then years later, her mom dies. And that's kind of messed up to be a young teenager girl, either one of your parents to lean on for emotional or financial support. <laughs> This definitely messed me up emotionally. I'm not even gonna lie to you. She was staying with her grandfather. At some point, renovations was done on the house, so she had to go find somewhere to stay. Now, while she's staying out in this tent close to Shigare's house, they end up discovering that she lives close by. The early morning show before school finds this house and sees these Zodiac stones outside this house. She's actually running into Zodiac people with the Zodiac possessed by the Zodiac spirits. The one thing that had me really hot about fruit baskets is Akito. Akito had me 100% angry because first of all, why are you so evil? Akito reminds me of the females that do the pick me. That's always like, pick me, pick me, pick me. I'm about to step on every other female's toe because I want a man to pick me. Of course, unfortunately, Akito had a huge responsibility of being the god of the Zodiac members. All I can say is if you're okay with seeing kids understand and try or try their very best I should say to understand the type of lifestyle that they're gonna have to adjust to all because they were possessed by a Zodiac member it's kind of messed up in a way. In the end though uh, Akito definitely does get free from her emotional distraught lifestyle and I actually like that for her. I like that she becomes a little bit different when she's no longer possessed by the God spirit that is supposed to, I guess, reign over the Zodiac signs. And of course, y'all can correct me or add some notes in the comments about the show because really and truly, it's just one of those shows where you really have to watch it to understand what I'm talking about. And if you didn't watch it, you don't know what I'm talking about. If you watch it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But Akito really just got on my nerves the whole entire time. I ain't gonna lie to you. I will say that I got teary-eyed towards the very end. Toru was like, listen, we can start all over. Hi, I'm Toru Honda. And Akito was like, you, you don't mean it, like you're just saying that and then just, she just ends up falling off the cliff or whatever. And then Yuki and Kyo, they're also one of my favorite characters in the show because the whole time they're very protective of Toru and when Shigure acts like the little creep that he is, they're always like, uh, get away from her, you're a big creepy weirdo guy that does stuff to children, you're weird. Several songs in the outros and intros, I wanna say I've downloaded and Shazam, I Shazammed and downloaded all of the songs. But my favorite one is Prism and it's an intro I think to season two, not season one. It might be season one, I don't even remember. But I will say Prism is one of my favorite songs. Just so you have an idea, I have a playlist called J-Pop Favorites. And just so you guys know, if you all wanna like extend your wonderful loving playlist of J-Pop and K-Pop music to me, please know that I will be forever grateful, happy, and excited to discover the new music that is out there. The songs that just sit when I watch a show that I find and discover, Shazam that bad boy, add it to the playlist, move on about my day. If you have any songs that you feel like, oh my God, I would love for her to hear this, she would really like this song, Nelly, check out this playlist, look at my playlist. Go ahead, find me on Twitter. I prefer Twitter over Instagram. If you wanna follow me on Instagram and talk to me on there, that's fine too, but you gotta make sure that you mention, hey, I just watched this video, 
here's a playlist. Or at least make sure that you put it in like the first line. So if I go and decide to check on the creepy messages that come through and I scan and I see J-pop anime playlist, I'll know that you watch this video and I'll know that you're sending me a song and you're not trying to be creepy. Or just put it in the comment section and then make sure that you put J-pop, K-pop, anime playlist, whatever your playlist is called, share it with me, share it with everybody. Cause what? Sharing is caring. But here's my playlist right here. Nee, 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 nee. You might not be able to see the words, which is fine, but you the song Eden by Monkey Magic. I like that song. Recommend My Hero Academia. Five stars, five out of five, 10 out of 10. Fruit Basket. I do recommend Fruit Basket if you are an emotional being who likes all that lovey-dovey, uh, oh, overriding courage and pushing through your emotions to really explain how you feel and understand how you really feel about somebody and how you want to be happy. But I do recommend Fruit Basket. It's honestly one of those shows I feel like you could rewatch any season, anytime, any day, really. Recommend it, 10 out of 10, five stars. Fourth anime series that I recently started watching was Kamisama Kiss. It is an ultimate favorite. I've watched it years ago and forgot, like Fruit Basket, I forgot about this show, forgot that it existed, and I honestly forgot what it was about. Then I started watching and I was like, hmm, it sucks that there's not another season out of Kamisama Kiss, but they took one of the seasons off of Hulu, so that made it incomplete. So I had to go on over to Amazon Prime videos and watch the rest of Kamisama Kiss. I highly recommend it if you like that lovey-dovey stuff. Anything that kind of remind me of like Inuyasha. Tomoe definitely gave me Seshomaru vibes. He most definitely did. Cause Tomoe was like such a bougie, uh, I don't with you type of person. But I like his personality because it was giving, he's a man of excellence and I love a man of excellence. I love a man that knows how to dress, want to dress, all that good stuff. Yes, I be having crushes on these characters. What? Don't judge me, judge your man me. This is a pretty short series, like a cleanser. It's not too dramatic. It's not too overwhelming emotionally. It's very touching in a way because it's about Nanami and Tomoe and how Nanami was broke and she went through some trials and error with her mom. Her mom died while she was at a very young age and her dad was like a gambler. He's not good at paying his bills, always in debt. Next thing you know, Nanami didn't have no money or a place to go. Tomoe's former god, Makage, that's his name. I couldn't think of what his name was. But the Makage Shrine is where Tomoe was a familiar at. He used to be just a yokai spirit, just a wild fox. He became Makage's familiar. So Makage abandoning his shrine and left for like 20 something years. And then he decided to kiss Nanami on her forehead to give her the land god mark and then turned her into a land god. And now she was the lady and mistress of said Tomoe. And of course, Tomoe didn't accept it at first. He was being like a little butthole about it, which is cool because that makes him still an awesome person. And then at some point, Kurama gets involved, which I think he's pretty cool too. There's like one of the episodes that really had me like, I like that little Tomoe away the being shrunken into like a baby familiar. I recommend that show. It's pretty cool. I liked it, loved it, and definitely want more of it. If it was up to me, they would still be creating shows or creating episodes on Kamisama Kiss, but unfortunately, it has been done for. And final show is something that's actually fairly new. I mean, 2023, like there's only one season it's called My Happy Marriage. I like this show. I liked it, loved it, and definitely want more of it. I highly recommend it to those that love that sappy stuff. And realize as I was watching the show that these characters in this show actually have powers. Like they have quirks or superpowers or however you want to call it. About this girl named Mio, she has an abusive family. Her dad married Mio's mom. Mio's mom got pregnant with her. And then as she was continuously coughing and getting worse and worse, she realized I'm not gonna be long for this world. So basically Mio, I'm about to steal your powers. First and foremost, I had no idea that these characters had powers to begin with until the middle of season one. So then the father realized, hmm, my wife who has this wonderful bloodline, we create this child, our child is supposed to have the same bloodline as the wife, but then the child does not show any type of examples of the powers. So the father is like, hmm, whatever. Next thing you know, wife dies, psh, this man goes and gets him another wife, has a baby with this woman, and then the woman, and, and she's gonna always be called the woman, and her child that she gives birth to basically makes 
uh, Mio's life a living hell. Um, she bullies this girl and they just treat her like she ain't nothing but a piece of cloth on the floor. She ends up becoming a servant for them, which is kind of messed up in a way because it's like, you're okay with your daughter being a servant to your new wife and your, your daughter, her stepsister strange behavior that man deserves every hell that's coming his way in the show the father decides to send Mio off to marry some powerful guy and little did we know this powerful man is fine too and he got powers this man had electrical power he was able to pull thunder out of the sky and fire from his hand and he's fast i'm sitting there thinking to myself Mio, you had literally the sh end of the stick the worst end of the stick the stickiest stick of the stick but then you get to be with this man oh now what touched my heart is the fact that this man didn't trust her from the jump. But then as she was still there, just literally being her wholesome self, this man is like, hold on, it's Lord Kudo. Even though he, with his fine self, was being all defensive at first, he's like, I know you hear the rumors about me, how I'm mean to all the women that are trying to be my fiance. But little did we know, they wanted him for his money. They did not want that man for that love or anything in between. They wanted that man for his money and money only and the power too. Cause this man had two powers that I've seen so far. He might have more, but I don't remember. But either way it goes, that man is fine with his long blonde hair. <laughs> Eats Mio for the first time. She comes to the house, they meet. She ends up, even the first, on the first night, this girl has been through so much. She's like emotionally like such a soft, gentle soul. And she's been abused for so long since she was a kid. So she's immediately not trying to be anything but a servant to this man. The first night she cooks for him and he's looking at her like, you poisoned this food, didn't you? I don't even want nothing, to, I don't want none of this. Leaves her sitting there and she's like, oh my God, I'm really just not. I'm not good at anything. I'm not good at making a man happy. I suck at life. This is terrible. I'm like, Mio. God. <laughs> Mio, it's okay. It's okay. Mio, poor, poor Mio. She was already feeling some type of way before she met this man. So as she's sitting here going through life with this man, she's just trying to figure out ways to just be there and support him. He ends up lighting up the mood and realizes like she's not actually about that life she's not trying to kill me i might like this woman for real for real and she's not trying to be all giddy and excited about me and my money and my big fancy house and my big ruling ways i might actually like this woman and marry her for real for real so then as time progress of course some bs restart so she has these nightmares at night and next thing you know lord kudo comes in while she's sleeping and he because he hears her and he's like oh oh She's going through it. And his servant, I think they end up realizing or picking up the fact that she wasn't treated fairly well at her father's house. She showed up in a, a nice kimono, I think. I don't know if it was a nice one or not, but what I do know is that when they looked at her other kimonos, they was like, Not on my watch. Not on my watch. She got hands of a slave because why her knuckles look like that, why her fingers look like that, her clothes have been beaten up. They look like they've been repaired over and over again. And so immediately he starts realizing and picking up the vibes like this girl been through some stuff. I'm going to save her. What's that song by Nicki Minaj? This time won't you save me? This time won't you save me? And that's what Lord Kudano did. He saved that girl. I love a man that saves a woman. Oh! Real tears in my eyes. I like that show. I like that Lord Kudo decides that he's really going to go out of his way to protect this woman. At the point, the show gets a little dramatic because then the family that's related to Mio's mother, grandfather, steps in and he's like, I've been looking for you. I found you. You coming with me. You staying with me. You're not marrying Lord Kudo because that's not who he's supposed to be with. He's supposed to stay with us. Your bloodline is very powerful. You are your mother's daughter. You ain't going with nobody. You ain't stepping with nobody. And that's on that. And that's on period. That kind of made me hurt because. I'm thinking to myself, she's starting to really love Lord Kudo. Going out of her way to meet with his sister. He wants to be everything that he needs. And next thing you know, y'all putting her through this. I like the show. I like where it's going. I'm very fascinated with the storyline. Five stars, 10 stars, all the stars in Mars. Loved it, liked it, loved it, and I want more. 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 That's all my reviews for today. If you guys liked it, loved it, and want more of it, hit that like button. Comment and tell me what your favorite shows are. If you have any shows that you recommend, please let me know 
me know. I am over here struggling. When I say my hero season six have me in a chokehold, I'm in such a chokehold that I'm watching literally any type of anime that exists. That's how hurt I am. That's how broken I am. And the fact that my boo, the fact that the love of my life, Kachan, really went out of his way to apologize to Deku. I was like, oh my God, this show is crazy. I was so, uh. Before we go, hold on, before we go. Any storytellers, filmmakers, creatives, writers, listen. I said writers, creative writers, whatever. Listen, y'all writers, I don't even know if that's in the manga or not, or if that's in the book, if it is, cool, whatever. But I have to put emphasis on it. I love the idea they had where they had Kachan, young Kachan talking to Lil Deku. And then they went through each phase of their lives as he's apologizing. You cannot tell me that didn't make you cry if you watched it. You can't tell me that it didn't have you crying because it had me like, that's it. That's it right there. That's the thing. That's the thing that's going to be thinking for the rest of its thing in life. I hope you guys liked it, loved it, and want more of it. Until next time.